Assalamu alaikum and good morning, everyone. My name is Muhammad Dahi from Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank, and I'm your moderator for this session. This session is brought to you by Adib Business. Adib offers your business a wide range of Sharia compliant products and services that suit your business needs. Today, you will learn about the importance of Al Ittihad Credit Bureau, Credit Score, and Check Score for SMEs and how these solutions will impact your business. Just a few, few steps for, your, for the best experience before we get started. It is recommended to exit all background applications and other inactive web tabs to avoid your internet bandwidth from overloading. You can ask questions in the Q&A section below, and these questions will be answered after the presentation. At the end of the webinar, there will be a raffle draw for a chance to win an iPhone 13. Now, I would like to introduce our guest speakers for today. His Excellency Marwan Ahmed Lutfi, the Chief Executive Officer of Al Ittihad Credit Bureau, and Mr. Brian Gambin, the Senior Manager of Subscriber Management at Al Ittihad Credit Bureau. Your Excellency, over to you. Assalamu alaikum, everyone, and good morning for those who are. English speakers. Uh, I'll start my presentation today. Welcome to the seminar or webinar, uh, rather. Uh, I'd like to walk you today through Al Ittihad Credit Bureau. For those of you who may not know who, who Al Ittihad Credit Bureau is, we'll do a quick history and journey of what Al Ittihad Credit Bureau is, the main products, and then I'll switch over to Brian to discuss a little bit more about the products that impact your daily lives. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the ACB journey. In 2010, Al-Ittihad credit, uh, uh, credit, the credit information law uh, was actually passed. It was a federal law that defines what credit information is and uh, uh, who are the data providers for these uh, types of credit information and what does the company do specifically. In 2012, uh, Al-Ittihad Credit Bureau was formed and it started creating uh, the database that we currently have, including developing the core system uh, for collecting data and issuing credit reports and scores at the first instance. In 2014, November specifically, uh, we have issued the first credit report, and that was, of course, an aggregation of all of the credit facilities that were supplied by banks into one single report for individuals or companies. Uh, and then the market started picking up after that on using credit reports. Three years later, we launched the credit score. And the credit score uh, in more detail will be explained later, but in simple terms, it's a 300 to 900 number that shows you the level of risk of an individual or a company uh, uh, missing a payment in the next 12 months. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about how scores are impacted later. In 2018, uh, with, with credit reports being used extensively, we launched our uh, digital channels. Uh, everyone wanted to have information on what their credit report looks like. In the past, we used to be uh, located, still are physically in Abu Dhabi and in Dubai. But then with the launch of the digital channels, we made it much easier for uh, individuals and companies to buy their reports sitting at the comfort of their homes or offices. In 2020, after 10 years of the initial law was passed, the federal credit information law was amended. Uh, and these amendments really expanded the scope uh, and the definition of credit information. It expanded the mandate to submit data to the Hard Credit Bureau, which means any entity that has some form of payment obligation is now mandated to submit this data. But also it introduced a lot of the digitization and relieved a lot of the consent that is required with this. So today, uh, even any entity that has any form of indebtedness uh, by uh, to an individual or a company is generally not required to provide the consent so that entity can actually review one's credit report or score as long as there is a financial obligation currently outstanding and the same thing is goes to the uh, new indicators we worked very hard with the ministry of justice the central bank uh, and and the government as well to to lift the consent from credit scores and indicators and that is extremely important because scores and indicators are becoming integrated in our daily life, you you don't realize them, uh, maybe, but uh, we use them basically. Uh, a lot of entities use them to provide you products and services. Uh, we'll explain to you a little bit that uh, later. But most importantly, it's really 
how can someone build a risk mindset in your daily transactions? And that was paved the way uh, to launching what we uh, launched this year in February, the check score. And the check score uh, is an indicator uh, that tells you how likely a check uh, is going to bounce and gives you a bounce rate probability of between 1 and 99%. Uh, this, of course, came, came uh, rightly with the, uh, the decriminalization uh, of the bounce checks and uh, in line with the effectiveness of the insolvency and bankruptcy laws. In the near future, we will also have something called the tenant score, which will help uh, really identify uh, the potential of basically bouncing on rent and payments uh, specifically. So that is in a, in a nutshell where Al Tahad Credit Bureau has gone from the, in the past decade or so. There's of course more details which are applicable to the subscribers and banks, which we will not delve into right now. In Al Tahad Credit Bureau, uh, entities that connect with us uh, are, uh, are, can actually use our products on, uh, and they're billed monthly. Uh, and that uh, is a bouquet of products. Uh, more than 100 subscribers today subscribe to our services. Uh, they connect through us. Of course, banks and finance companies are the ultimate subscribers that we started off with. But then telcos, companies like Doing It Salat are actually linked with us. And you might see their, uh, their integration with the credit scores and, and a lot of their services and products that they offer. And then we have business conglomerates, insurance companies, and different companies. Anyone who actually has some sort of credit risk, uh, an outstanding balance that someone wants to assess what kind of risk that uh, that person might have, whether it's an individual or a company, then generally they will have some sort of use of our uh, uh, products. Over the past uh, several years, we've seen a very steady trend of, of more utilization of our products. This year, we're going to be hitting almost 6 million inquiries uh, by the end of this month. Inquiries means any type of products, whether it's a credit score, a credit indicator, uh, a credit report, or any other product that we might offer. And that just tells you that the impact that the Hat Credit Bureau today has on the managing uh, credit risk in the entire economy of the United Arab Emirates. Over the period of time since 2012, we have actually managed to build a database uh, that has 14 million individuals and companies, 24 million credit facilities and contracts. Credit facilities are those that come from banks and finance companies. Contracts are those that are supplied by water and electricity authorities, uh, telco uh, operators, uh, and other um, uh, data providers such as the courts. And lastly, 19 million IBANs. So all of the IBANs today that are set up and uh, within the banking system in the UAE are all reported into El Tahad Credit Bureau. They are used to link uh, basically the check data specifically, so to, to be able to generate the check score, which I just described, and of course, We'll discover more details in the next slides. Overall, that database really came through more than 90 data providers. Uh, and as you can see today, uh, the central bank is a data provider. We're linked with their uh, check clearing system, which means all of the data that on the checks, whether it's cleared or bounced, comes to us. Courts today, Russell Hema courts, Dubai courts, and the federal courts all submit uh, data to us. So any payment obligation that is a result of a final judgment is actually reflected in our credit reports. Uh, business conglomerates, uh, they said utility companies, Abu Dhabi distribution company, al Ain distribution company, uh, Tahad Water and Electricity, they're all data providers with other utility companies slowly being added as we speak. Uh, on that car leasing companies such as rent a car whether it's avis or budget on when it's large conglomerate as well uh, and any form of regular payment activity that is being reported into the Tahad credit bureau and uh, shows up in the report um, of course this data process of how this data is actually collected uh, and processed and, and aggregated is actually in a fully automated manner so we operate a completely digital and paperless operation we use uh, analytics and business intelligence to generate these sort of products that we talked about, especially when it comes to predictors such as credit scores and indicators. Uh, and again, we are compliant with the highest standards that are applicable to our business today, whether they're ISO or UAE information assurance standards. All of this is channeled into our products, and these products are actually offered on our uh, mobile apps uh, through our website portals or through electronic formats. Uh, on one-to-one -to, -one, uh, to our subscribers who actually use our services on a daily basis. To wrap up uh, Al Tahad Credit Bureau, when we initiated uh, the, the business officially in January 2015, 
we had planned to only facilitate access to finance. And that is the main uh, reason of why credit uh, bureaus are generally created. If we can collect all of the information of, of payment information, payment behavior uh, on that, then it will make it easier uh, for, for individuals and companies to get access to credit. Of course, you might have seen this recently that uh, right now pre-approvals are, are are literally done online uh, in principle approvals sometimes the full approvals are actually done in an entirely automated manner uh, in an online manner right now with a lot of the digital banking activities taking place the integration with our credit bureau and our system becomes extremely important and this is exactly what you will find on, on a lot of the apps of the of, of, of the banking uh, providers or the telco providers when you want to get uh, immediate approvals on uh, paying through installments or applying for new credit facilities. So we have really ticked the boxes when it comes to collecting information, aggregating and generating them in credit reports, and then calculating, of course, credit scores uh, that will give these indicators. Recently, and the fourth line you can see here, we aim to increase the scorable population. By that, it means that today, not every person uh, or company today might necessarily have a credit facility, which means in the in the past that you will see a lot of people who might generate the reports will get uh, um, scores or labels that say not rated. So these scores are actually not applicable. Uh, and that was the reason because they didn't have any banking history. So now with the massive amounts of data and payment behavior, monthly payment behavior that we have uh, regard, uh, coming in from the non-banking sector, such, such as telcos and utilities and water electricity authorities. All of that really creates a pattern of behavior even before someone goes into the banking sector, which means the scorable population has just increased because right now we are able to issue scores for those who might not even have uh, a banking facility. And then we get into a little bit more details of why we are set up as well and what is our, our approach to maintaining a sustainable economic development cycle. Uh, we're increasing credit awareness, so now accessing your own reports became much easier through our digital channels. Eventually, we'll be doing a little more to explain to you about scores and make it available to the public. And then, of course, we have these more sophisticated product offerings, such as the ones that generally uh, subscribers uh, buy into. Uh, I will not get into the details, but if anyone wants any more details, we can get into it in the Q&A session. And of course, our involvement started with the banking sector, but now we clearly are integrated within the telco sector, adding value uh, to the operators and to consumers as well at the same time. We're getting integrated in the B2B sector, which is really, again, on the check transaction uh, and, and business transaction systems. And later on, you will see our involvement with other sectors such as real estate, insurance, and SME. In a nutshell, this is what the Etihad Credit Bureau is. I hope I've managed to give you just a little bit of a snapshot. There's much more uh, basically behind the tip of the iceberg, which I just shared. But uh, I'd like to actually hopefully wrap up with this and tell you that we have a long journey to come. and We have so many interesting things that we can add value to you as a consumer, to you as a business, but also for those that are managing credit. Uh, thank you very much. And I'll switch over to Brian to tell you a little bit more about our products. Thank you, Marwan, and again, good morning to everyone who is on call with us today. You may not know this, but each of you have an AACP credit report, and this is what it looks like. The credit report is issued to both individuals and companies and contains important data, which I'll break, I'll break down for you. So it contains demographic information for individuals, including name, nationality, gender, and address, and for companies, details, including the commercial license number, place and date of registration, and economic activities. The credit score, a 300 to 900 indicator, which I'll explain more about on the next slide. The expense to salary ratio. This is our latest indicator, which shows the total monthly payment obligations of an individual as a percentage of their reported salaries. Bounce check information, the details of all opened or closed facilities, credit, applications, outstandings, overdue amounts, and a two-year payment history on each credit facility or contract. It also highlights any court-ordered financial obligations issued by UAE courts. The report, as you can see, also includes color-coded tables showing monthly payments under different sections, with green representing the borrowers paying on time, through to red, which represents missed payments by more than 90 days. Anytime a credit report 
is issued by AECB, we generate it on a real-time basis with the information stored in our database and which is provided and refreshed by our data providers on a daily basis in most cases. So anytime you buy a credit report, you'll see your credit store included. So the credit score predicts the likelihood of an individual or a company to miss payments in the next 12 months and is calculating using over 2000 data points from various sources such as banks, finance companies, and telecommunication companies. The credit score also changes depending on your most recent financial behavior and ranges from 300 to 900, which is an interpretation of your risk, which in a bank's case may be used to ease your credit application process, for example. Your credit score is calculating by looking at all the information available in your credit report, such as your credit exposure, information regarding your credit cards, loans, overdrafts, or any other credit facility or telco and utility service under your name. Your credit score also tracks your payment behavior, i.e. whether you pay your bills on time, if you defaulted on payments, or if any of your checks have bounced. So how do you maintain a good score? Well, you would want to avoid being in the lower range, which is generally between one and three stars. So if today you've bought your credit report and you fall within this range, let me tell you what you can do to improve your score. Well, the first thing to do is to avoid bouncing checks. Bouncing checks does negatively impact your credit score. Reduce outstanding balances. Delay in paying your outstanding balance on your credit card each month will have a negative impact on your score. So it's important that you maintain low balances or zero balances. Don't keep unused credit facilities. The more credit cards you have, the more your score may be impacted. So even credit cards you don't use may still negatively affect your credit score. Make payments on time. Delay in payments of your credit use, such as your mortgage or loan installments and bills is one of the reasons that, that might affect your credit score. So make sure you pay your credit dues and bills on time. Delay in these will put a strain on your credit score. And finally, reduce maximizing your credit card limit utilization. If you maximize your credit card limits consistently, this will impact your credit score. Always try and not to utilize the entire limit or pay it before the due date. So what's the rule of thumb? Well, the key is prevention. Reversing a negative credit score takes time and effort, but keeping it high is always the best approach. As with the credit report, the credit score is generated in real time, which means that your credit score can change daily. So how are they used? Well, credit reports and credit scores are widely used. And I'll walk you through some of their uses in certain sectors. For example, when you apply for a credit card, the bank will request your credit report from AECP and evaluate this to determine your credit worthiness and define the credit card limit and interest rate. Generally speaking, the better your credit report and credit score, the better the terms offered by banks. They're also used to assess service applications for telcos such as doing a diesel app. So when you buy a new device on a payment plan, they would want to better understand your credit history to determine your eligibility, the contract repayment period, and the number of devices you can purchase. In the case of corporates, for example, businesses also check the credit report and credit scores of their partners to understand their payment behavior and determine the payment terms, such as whether they give 30, 60, or 90 day payment terms, or whether they ask for full payment upfront instead. Another example relates to government, whereby a company applies to participate in a government tender. The tender application and the credit report is reviewed by the government entity, and a decision to allow participation is made based on a minimum credit score eligibility, which is linked to the credit score and bounce check history. If the minimum credit score is not met, then they would most likely be disqualified from participating in the tender. And finally, even comparison websites use your credit score. For example, an individual is looking for best loan terms and uses comparison website who filter the offer based on score eligibility. For example, if my score was 700, I would most likely see all the loans 
available as I would be entitled to, and I meet most of the bank's eligibility criteria. If my score was 650, I probably wouldn't see loans offered dedicated to scores of 680 and above. Well, thanks to this mechanism, and if I did apply for an eligible offer, I would receive an in-principle approval on my loan instantly. So buying your credit report is simple. As an individual, the process is easy and involves downloading our app for free from either the App Store or Google Play and inputting your details to register, including scanning your Emirates ID or by using UAE Pass. Once you pay, the credit report is immediately available on the app and delivered by email in PDF format. For companies to get their credit reports, they simply need to visit our website, www.aecb.ae, and fill in the form, which includes details such as company name, trade license number, contact name, etc. The company will also be required to upload the commercial license and Emirates ID of the authorized person. Once the information is submitted and verified, the credit report will be processed and delivered to a specified email provided by the company generally within one working day. You'll be able to request your credit report for just 84 dirhams or just your credit score for 10 dirhams 50. And this is delivered directly to your email address in PDF format. You can also download your credit report or credit score online through our website. The cost of a company credit report is 157 dirhams 50. Another way to obtain your credit report and credit scores is to become a subscriber with AECB, like many of our subscribers who need to obtain credit data on their customers. This, was a, this will involve connecting back-end systems for the company to have access to credit reports and credit scores on demand. So if anyone is interested in subscription, pricing does vary, but we'll be happy to discuss this offline after this webinar. The credit report is a key product which we've developed, but we've also developed other innovative products to check score, which you may have heard of and which I'll share a bit more about on the next slide. So before starting, let me give you some background. Every time we develop and design a new product, we do this to support in some way people or companies in the UAE because they have an issue or we can make things better, uh, uh, easier or faster for them. In this case, we started with a serious challenge that both individuals and companies faced in the UAE. So what was that challenge? Well, in the UAE and in 2021 alone, over 26 million checks were issued and over half a million of those bounced, with the receiver being unable to know the potential risks associated with receiving the check, i.e. whether the individual or the company had a history of bouncing checks in the past or their payment patterns. Also, the introduction of the UAE bankruptcy and insolvency laws, as well as the recent decriminalization of bounce checks, means that it's even now more important than ever for check receivers to assess the risks associated in accepting checks as a form of payment. So the solution, while well, understanding this challenge, AECB developed a new product that addresses these concerns. Check score is an easy to read indicator which ranges from one to 99%, 99% which predicts the probability of a check to bounce in the next nine months. It's calculated using the issuer's credit payment and check clearance history and other data points that are statistically correlated to the probability of a check to bounce. Unlike credit reports, which dives a lot deeper into individuals or companies' credit history, the check score indicator doesn't reveal any confidential information on the check issuer, meaning it's accessible to everyone. So the benefits, well, knowing the likelihood of a check to bounce is essential information that check score can provide upfront, supporting both individuals and companies to take informed decisions on whether to accept a check as a method of payment or not. By using check score, the check receiver will have comfort on accepting checks with peace of mind or the possibility of taking an even more informed decision for higher risk cases. Since launching publicly back in February of this year, the total overall value for check scan to date through check score totaled 2.7 billion dirhams. So how can you buy a check score? Well, unlike the credit report, which requires user authentication due to 
the confidential information it holds, the CheckScore app is accessible to everyone. And registration is really simple. Once an individual user registers on CheckScore by downloading the app from either the App Store or Google Play, they can scan a check or upload the check image. By completing the payment process, the user will immediately be shown the check score. For companies, check score is accessible through our website and users simply need to input the check details and the check score is immediately delivered by email in PDF format. So what does the check score report include? Well, it shows a snapshot of the check information. It highlights the probability of a check to bounce in both a color and a percentage format. So the indicator with a low probability to bounce a percentage is colored in green, showing a good score, through to red, which shows a poor one. And finally, it shows the insights of a check issuer, such as the percentage of checks that have bounced in the last 24 months, and whether the issuer has any finance-related court order judgments issued against them. So by using check score, you don't need the consent of the issuer, which makes the decision-making process on whether to accept a check or not faster and more convenient. The price of check score, like credit score, starts at just 10 times 50 per inquiry for online customers. Again, sub for subscribers, we do offer volume-based pricing, and we'll be, again, more than happy to discuss this offline in more detail. This ends our presentation today, and we would like to thank everyone for attending today's webinar. We'll be more than happy to take some questions and I'll hand back to Mohammed to facilitate this. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, Brian. That was very informative. Uh, now I would like to move on to uh, the Q&A session. And I would like to invite His uh, Excellency uh, Marwan and Brian to, uh, to this session. Uh, for those who would like to ask questions, uh, please use uh, uh, the, uh, the Q&A section uh, as shown in the screen and enter your name as well. Okay, so we'll start. I think we, uh, we started to receive some questions here. Um, and the first question um, is um, from uh, Tibancho. Uh, he's saying, does buying now does buy now later included on uh, on uh, or counted within the uh, the credit score? Uh, very interesting uh, question. Uh, the BNPL industry, as they call it, uh, the buy now pay later, is a very important industry. It's growing uh, recently. You know there have been several local players here involved uh, in the UAE and in the GCC region as well. Uh, but also Apple recently announced the Apple. Uh, basically scheme of buy now and pay later, uh, which is uh, which is very important. I think it's something that is very important and actually it, it, it matches what the banking sector is doing, but it's on a for fairly short period of time. So we can confirm that, yes, all of them are actually uh, interested in, in discussions with us to actually submit data, but also use the data. Uh, they're acting as credit providers, which means they're almost like banks. Uh, but at the same time, uh, eventually, uh, not right now, but eventually, yes, this data uh, is most likely going to be submitted because as per the definition of credit information law, any form of payment, future payment obligation is a mandatory submission to the Tahad Credit Bureau. Okay, so uh, the next question um, um, it is from uh, Jasna. Um, uh, what if an installment postponed request is submitted to the bank and is postponed? How will it show in the AACB uh, report? Uh, will it show as a red? Okay, so if it's a voluntary postponement and that's part of your agreement uh, with the, uh, the bank or credit provider, uh, then generally uh, your loan tenor is extended. So normally a postponement or the delay of, a, of an installment means if you have an installment on 36 months, then you just postpone it. It means that you're just going to be paying it to 37 months rather than 36 months. So it will not show as a delay uh, in your report. Perfect. Uh, next question. The bad company rating will affect the owner or the signatory on his rating. So basically uh, the... the is that wondering whether it's affecting also the, the the owner himself on a personal level? Yeah, this is a little bit more of a legal uh, question because it relates to the uh, the company structure. Uh, 
so this company is a sole establishment and it's owned by one person then yes it will uh, impact because that company reported technically is an individual report uh, especially if you have the guarantees against it and all of these but if you're a company that is an llc uh, for example then this does not uh, does not affect it only affects the company itself perfect another question uh, aecb reports will show all company account and how many checks returns they have in all banks uh, let me rephrase will... the question just uh, to sure if the company has many accounts uh, so can you know how the, exactly the check returns will affect effect of, uh, effect on, on on a specific account or the entire common relationship basically okay so when it comes to the check score i assume this is a check score uh, question so if you're uh, asking you're checking the details of right. the check and how uh, likely it gives you a bounce rate so normally we actually say how likely a check is to bounce so it's the the uh, the the issuer of the check and then we say we look at the check so there are two levels and and sort of um, that we look at so first of all we take the check we link it back to the iban and then we link it back to that uh, issuer of uh, of that check itself now then we look at whether there are multiple uh, bank accounts linked uh, to that issuer and then we look at it, uh, the algorithm looks at specifically how many checks and how variations so so again but but in simple terms i'll tell you whether it's one issuer or multiple bank accounts if you have bounce checks from three four accounts and one account is very clean don't think if you issue a check from the clean account means that you will not get a bad rating right because in the end of the day the ultimate goal is really how likely a check is to bounce but also we look at the issuer uh, of that check uh, specifically but most importantly it's it's about also uh, the algorithm that looks after after the total number of checks issued also the total number of checks issued versus bounce the total amounts that were actually issued and cleared and issued and bounce and all of these really play a very important role in the probability so if you issue a thousand checks a year and you bounce one uh, then your probability of uh, bouncing will not be as as high as uh, uh, as basically someone else who issues you know five checks a year and one bounces which is as you can see a quick calculation of percentage is 20. same thing comes to amounts as well so if your average check value is ten thousand dollars for example uh, and then you bounce a check for 100 dollars your uh, your your again the probability of bounce will becomes uh, again uh, is lower rather than you know your average check is ten thousand and then you bounce a check for a million dollars for example so so a lot of these things are automatically calculated uh, we also have uh, channels where we can uh, hear out from individuals or companies that have used this and say you know i think you know I, you know this might not be accurate we do a lot of analysis on the on the scores and everything that comes to us we analyze and we kind of our scores are generally calibrated on a yearly basis uh, so and we've launched check score on a trial mode for almost more than six months as well before we actually went public uh, with it so we're very confident with the scores but of course keep in mind scores and indicators uh, are uh, a general predictor, which means that my, they might fit anywhere between 70 to 90 percent of the population. There will be uh, anomalies, of course, uh, there. But anyone who has any issue, he can raise it to us, and we can always investigate this and see if we can uh, inc adapt it into the new model verification that we do ne in the next round. So it, it is basically an indicator, and but it's, it shouldn't be taken in silo. It has to be with other uh, measures, like uh, as a business owner. I I need to to also to to do other due diligence uh, measurements on on, on, the, on the supplier the, and the buyer basically. Yeah, correct. If you look at the old days when you collect a check, what was your only uh, sort of legal or cushion that you had? You only had the criminalization, right? Which means I'll take it, I'll go criminalize it, uh, and then transfer my risk to you know the the, the police departments and then into the justice system and all of this. But when that is lifted and right now and you have uh, individuals uh, can actually opt to to you know uh, enact their right as per the insolvency law or companies as per the bankruptcy law all of a sudden your your security of taking a check thinking that the, the legal and banking system will back you is no longer there so if the, in the past you used to take it with that lifted what other option do you have and that's when we started really developing this product over the past two years to to be timed with that sort of alleviation of the, of the decriminalization and, and, and the new laws being introduced it was to add one more piece of information that in reality was missing so what they said you can take a check with nothing or you can take a check and with the bureau telling you that there's has a 10 percent probability of bounce 
Now the decision is still up to you, right? But I'm adding just one layer of information based on the data that I have that you never had before. So you can then choose ways. And a lot of people who used it actually very much uh, said to us, uh, you know, and said, thank you for doing this because right now, if I had a 50% check bounce rate, all of a sudden I actually tell my counterparty, okay, can you pay me 50% in cash in advance? And I'll give you this 50% remaining uh, in a check in the next three months, for example. So the idea is cash flow management also, which means today, if a check bounces, 100% of your revenue or whatever income that you might have generated from the check is actually parked, right? And then you go through the legal system, it doesn't work. But if you have that probability of bounce, would you rather get 50 or 60% of that income so that you can keep the business rolling and then and then go after it, especially now with the partial check uh, payment possibility, right? So, so all of a sudden, if that you take 50% of that amount and then the main 50 is in a check, you can actually every week or month go into that and actually start deducting or withdrawing partial payments on that check. So if you have a balance of 100,000, 50 collected in advance, 50, you go one week and you collect 10,000, then you have a balance of 40. The idea behind this is to ensure that the cash flow is always rotating in the system to, and to make sure that, yes, you know, businesses can really get the lifeline uh, when it comes to making sure that they, don't, they just don't go underwater when it comes to cash flow issues. Perfect. Um, I have a question now for Brian. Actually, and how the check scoring uh, works on, and how accurate it is, based on which parameter the score will indicate. I think it's in line with what Marwan touched based on. Marwan answered a lot of that question before. Again, we don't, we can't disclose it in terms of you know what happens behind the scenes in terms of parameters. But what we do know is that the quality of the data we actually receive is of very very high quality. So, you know, a lot of effort, a lot of. Um, uh, planning, a lot of testing goes into um, any launch of any new product that we do. So, you know, we're very confident that, that um, you know, the accuracy of check score is very high. And, you know, given the, the you know, the usage, you know, when you talk about 2.7 uh, billion dirhams worth of checks passing through check score, I think it, it signifies, you know, how strong the product is and, and its use. It's only been out since February. So we expect, you know, um, check score to be used even more in uh, going into 2023 as more people, you know, learn about this product through these webinars and, and you know, the benefits that they bring. Perfect. Uh, the next question is, if the ownership of the company has changed, can affect the new owner or the rating stays the same? The same uh, yeah. we discussed. Change of ownership does not make a difference. It's more you should question the legal structure. So if it's a sole establishment that you actually then all of a sudden change that ownership into another sole establishment, then of course that will be transferred uh, to the new owner specifically. So it's very important when, you know, if you're acquiring or, or transferring a company as a sole owner uh, to actually make sure it's not a limited liability company to know if it comes with liability. Perfect. Um, if the company has a terrible rating, after how much time will it return to normal? And what's the formula? Uh, okay, I hope you're reading this question uh, verbatim as is, right? <laughs> yeah, because um, you know there's no such thing yeah. as a terrible rating. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's no such thing as a terrible rating or a fantastic yeah. rating. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm reading it, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because again, and for whomever has written it as well, it's very important to to state that you know there is no such thing as a as a terrible rating or an excellent rating. Yes, we have aimed to simplify. The credit score by introducing a star rating because it's new we have over you know 150 nationalities living in the uae we have those that come with uh, background and experience knowing what credit scores mean and those who don't and it's a very technical thing it's a 300 to 900 number right that actually at every you know 30 points or three points or 10 points you know risk changes and generally advanced sophisticated institutions such as banks know how to use this but as an individual what you should follow is generally a rating now, can you say that the one-star hotel is a terrible hotel? You know, I can't say it's a terrible hotel because at the end of the day, you know, horses for courses, as the English say. And it's very important to know that some people are fine with the one-star hotel, right? And some people want the five-star and some people want the four-star. For us, what we look at is, yes, absolutely, everyone should uh, basically aim to reach that, you know, three, four, five-star because... We market the four star as the good as a good rating, basically that you should aim to have. But it doesn't mean it's a good rating or it's a bad rating. 
you can have a two star rating and you still will have banks uh, and finance companies offering you credit right but the profile changes which means it's risk based pricing right now and you'll see if you have a, a, a basically a lower rating then all of a sudden you will get facilities from certain entities but they're be extremely expensive right and that entity is taking the risk whether you're actually going to default or not default and then but as you go higher generally you just have more favorable terms i would rather say uh, rather than actually saying you know you have a you know a terrible score so in reality just everyone needs to have an open mind to say that yes anywhere you fit today you must aim to improve that so and again if you want to improve that then generally you should be working up the stars uh, but in reality even if you default this is a behavioral and uh, predictive credit score basically which means that it changes over time we look at the two year period of time and anything you do today and on a daily basis will actually help improve the score the score is a dynamic score which is calculated at the, at the time of request but at the same time if you as as brian has mentioned in his uh, presentation you know if you maintain these basics uh, then then you will see an improvement in the first 3 to 6 months and then it will continue to improve going forward so it's not the end of the world but the most important thing is do not fall into the traps that really will impact your score negatively perfect perfect um this question for, uh, for you your excellency it's uh, referring to the sole establishment uh, but if the company is llc and new owners ca uh, came into the picture what will be the case and is it the same as so uh, it, it doesn't make a difference as i said if it's an llc it's a limited liability company then the, the report is attached to that company and that trade license the change of owners in the trade license might be reflected uh, in our system, but uh, it, it's linked to the ch subject, and the subject is the trade licensed entity, not the individuals behind it. Um, by the way, we are receiving many questions, but for, because of the time constraint, we we're going to just take uh, the uh, the last question uh, for the today. Um, if the company has a terrible rating, again, this is, I think, repeated. I think the same person is asking the same question. Uh, but I think I think there is another part of it, which is what is the formula that is you use for the check score? I think this is the last question for today. Any, any score uh, we and maybe we, if, if if you Brian can answer that, yeah. I, I think I, I, I'll take this, uh, Hamad, as well because look, scores and indicators are very much uh, very technical, algorithm-driven uh, scores and indicators. We really study uh, a very large set of the market. We study how the performance of a score is. We do not launch a score unless it has good prediction, uh, basically, capability. So it's extremely important to understand we go through a, a very rigorous process before we launch uh, a score specifically. But, but it's a very important question saying, what is the formula? I wish I can tell you, you know, it's one plus one equals two. But in reality, it's a very complex formula. We've been working in the past almost one and a half years to break down these uh, uh, basically algorithms and look at what are the major things that are impacting a score. And I, I, I am very hopeful that in the beginning of next year, we will actually have this published on our website. So people can actually look into uh, basically what are the key factors that are impacting their score. So if someone says, I have a low score, and you actually buy your score, you will actually be able to, to tell what are the three th key things that are impacting your score. And then once you know this, the idea behind this is really to improve the payment, uh, the, 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 the financial responsibility and payment behavior of the country. So hopefully Q1 next year is when you'll see this, but what we call, we call it score factors internally, but this will be made public as well. Uh, and that will really help a lot of people to understand at least what goes into the calculation of that really impacts one score. For me personally, I, I'm interested in SMEs, and I saw in your presentation, Your Excellency, something about future something for SMEs. What, what's what's your aspiration as an organization for SMEs? Yeah, I think SMEs are a very important but very uh, more of untapped uh, area. What we're trying to figure is we're trying to figure what can actually add value to SMEs, and and with SMEs, they most likely are actually not borrowers. SMEs generally would say, especially at the startup stage, will not be able to borrow. I mean, they generally will be borrow if they have guarantees in place or collateral uh, in place. So so one of the angles we're looking at, if there are collaterals, how can we actually look at collateral and how can we combine collateral in defining credit worthiness? The other aspect is actually the addition of what we call the alternative data. 
An alternative date is extremely important for us because if you're not uh, in, in banking, we, we touched upon telcos, we touched upon utilities, but we're also very importantly now working with all of the Emirates as well on real estate data, uh, which means rental data. Uh, and again, in any company that is currently set up, you normally will either have a lease of an office that you're actually uh, renting, and then you have a landline or an internet line, uh, and then you'll have utilities that you're paying. So if you combine these three things and you look at the payment patterns of these things, and all of a sudden, yes, you can create uh, scores that are specific uh, to SMEs. We also are in discussions with the uh, Ministry of Human Resources, uh, basically an amortization, because also we want to see, is there any sort of data that can actually, could actually add value to us that could be embedded? So we have a data set, but the more we link different types of data to it, the more we can basically tweak and customize our products to actually fit the SMEs. And I think one of the biggest things that we started was with the check score, because today, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the larger companies today actually deal with generally international transfers and electronic transfers uh, and invoicing in that. But a lot of the major market, which is actually handled by SMEs, you know, 90% probably, I would say, actually deal with the usual, the classic ways of transferring, basically uh, paying through checks and sometimes managing cash flow through post-dated checks. And I think that's one of the first steps that we started uh, to focus on the SMEs. But I think in the future, we would want to create specific SME indicators, uh, things that actually show uh, basically how SMEs actually uh, are, are behaving in that way. And also our law allows us to actually collect transactional data going forward. So we haven't started yet, but, but for example, an SME that might have a small coffee shop running in, in one of the areas here, how will they get lending? They get lending based on, you know, uh, basically revenues. And I think revenues is generally under the, the movable collateral uh, law uh, it's what we call uh, basically future revenue. So they can actually pledge future revenues. And I think these are important things that we're looking at and saying, if you have a steady revenue stream for one or two years, can you really pledge future revenue to actually obtain credit? And that's really where we come into play. There are several different angles that we're trying to capture on the SMEs uh, as well that hopefully will result into uh, greater uh, products for SMEs, but also access to credit for SMEs. Perfect. Um, finally, if, if you would like to, uh, Brian, if you'd like to add anything as an advice for the audience to how they can uh, restore and maintain good credit score. You know, as I mentioned in my presentation, you know, the key is, um, you know, preserving what you have. So again, you know, don't bounce checks, pay your bills on time, you know, don't maximize your credit cards every single, you know, month to, you know, always, you know, again, settle your dues, you know, because you know, if you have a good score, maintain it. If you're working towards a good a good score, you know, maybe you've had a, a bad run and now you want to sort of uh, aim for a higher score. You know, the key is, um, you know, it will change. It just takes time, but it will change. So, you know, don't always, you know, feel that you're, you know, under pressure to get a good score. Banks do lend, like Marwan was saying. You know, everyone has a different risk profile. So, you know, what might be, you know, a high risk to one bank may be a medium risk to another. So, you know, don't feel disheartened just because you have a a a, um, a lower score than maybe someone in the fa in your family. Perfect, perfect. Um, I would like to thank you now, uh, your excellency. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you once again, um, and uh, would like to uh, host you in the future in in, in similar uh, event like this. Uh, it was very informative and useful uh, for me personally and for the audience. Um, as a reminder, uh, this session is brought to you by Adib Business. Uh, our highly experienced and dedicated Adib Business team offers you a broad collection of customized products and services to help you achieve the full potential of your business. To learn more about Adib Business, please visit our website adib.ae slash business. Now we would like to move to the exciting part of the session, the raffle draw for the winner of the iPhone 13. Once the randomizer select the winner, Adib will get in touch with the winner for the delivery of the gift. Good luck, everyone. Now we would like to start the draw. And the winner of the iPhone 13 is Nizamuddin Shingala Muhammad.
Congratulations, uh, Nizamuddin. Um, uh, and as I mentioned, Adib will get in touch with you uh, for the delivery of the gift. Um, and uh, I, I, I personally enjoyed the session. It was a wonderful session uh, brought to you by Adib Business. Uh, we look forward uh, for your feedback uh, on the survey link. Uh, Adib Business will bring, will bring on board more and more educational uh, episodes, providing valuable tips and information that can help you grow your business. Um, this episode will uh, sit on our Adib YouTube channel. Uh, and more webinars will be released uh, soon. So keep uh, uh, checking and, and uh, follow us on uh, LinkedIn or any other uh, social media channel uh, to see when uh, each webinar will be released. Um, stay tuned for more webinars and have a pleasure and a pleasant day. Thank you. Thank you.